Hello and welcome. Glad you could join me. I've been thinking for a while that, uh, well, I want to get back into RPG. Uh, it's been a long time since I played it, uh, and in I've always, but in saying that, I've always uh, liked to have terrain. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to play on a, a four by sixteen foot table, and we used to get foam from uh, old uh, like TV boxes and uh, different things like that, and we'd glue them together, and then we use spray cans, we spray them, and if we wanted a cave, we'd spray that one section longer so it would melt in and uh, we'd go by railroad trees and railroad houses and so we adventured across this humongous board in my friend's garage and that was how we played rpg so i've always associated uh games like that um with terrain and so i want terrain and i want inside of a building so i'm gonna start with is inside of buildings because uh, i have some buildings on the outside but I want those, uh, and I'm gonna kind of exaggerate the scale a little bit so I can fit fit, mini fit miniatures in there. That's the whole goal, is be able to fit miniatures with inside these buildings. So I was thinking, well, what do I wanna do? And I I watch uh, Barnwood Builders. I love Barnwood Builders, and that's kind of been my inspiration for this project, is is the things that they do. Uh, Bo, I think, Mark Bo, Mark Bo, I'm gonna, if I get his name wrong, I'm gonna feel bad. Um, but I love his crew. It's they're awesome, and they they uh, restore cabins and they and they sell them to clients and individuals build them up. And that's kind of the direction I'm going to go. Well, I should say there's going to be a lot of influence in that direction, and uh, I'm going to try to make this a two-parter. And in in this project, I'm also going to solicit not solicit that's kind of a bad word. I'm going to um, ask the group of hobbyers or the group of painters um the hobby hooligans if they'll paint some minis up for me uh, just because i am doing this and i'm in you know uh neck deep in in uh, modeling right now and really don't want to devote time to painting miniatures so i've asked them to paint me some miniatures for some props and also for their own characters so when we play start playing as a group uh they have their characters and I thought it was a good motivation for them to do that. And I'm going to try and sneak one in for me, uh, hopefully. But uh, can't think of much else uh, other than let's get started and see where this venture takes us. So what I've done is I've already gone through and cut some foam cords, quarter inch foam core. I think it was quarter inch. And I've already gone, gone and cut my sizes. Three inch, three inch, six and seven sixteenths. I have two of those for one wall. I have eight inch by three inch for another wall. I like my walls kind of high just cause I want to have more theme. Um, and it's purely taste and there's no rhyme or reason to it other than I just want a theme. To me, Playing RPG is, it's all about the story, it's all about the feel, it's all about that type of thing. So the more I can have to enhance my imagination, the funner it is for me, but it's totally 100% personal taste. You can do whatever you want and do it to your taste. So this is the main floor. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit oversized because I wanna be able to have interaction with miniatures and be able to uh, go down that path and have some things in here to give a feel for the tavern that I'm gonna construct. So first off, I, need, I want floors, I want to do wood, so I need to cut a bunch of wood up. And because it's on the interior, I'm going to use balsa wood. Uh, I don't want to use, for the paneling and for the wood flooring, I don't want to use basswood because it would just take me longer and with plastic miniatures, there's not going to be a lot of wear and tear on this. So I think I'll be fine with this. So I want to create a uh, wood grain just to make my life easier. I want my wood planks and everything to be uniform in this. So I want them to be about quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna mark 
a little spot on there. Make sure I line it up on that straight line. Get my metal ruler. Tyler's gonna make me a straight edge that cuts on a 90 degree when you stick a blade in it. But until then, I gotta eyeball it. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of these wood planks and I will, oops, I will get back to you. Now that I have a bunch of wood planks, I'm gonna start sanding them because I don't want to have the edges on them and I want to be able to have the creases or the seams show up better. So what I'm gonna do is just on the top edge, I'm just gonna lightly sand the top edge on both sides, make it round. That way when two pieces of wood are butted together, the seam will show up more and be able to enhance when I put washes or shades or whatever I do to it to be able to drive the exaggeration home. When I have four corner pieces in my my tavern for to give it that kind of like structure feel, that really beefy feel, and also so I can do some designs on it. Sorry, my ham hawk hands are in your way. So just like in my wood carving video, a tutorial, I'm gonna come down with a straight. And this is basswood. So it's a little, well, it's not a little, it's a lot harder. And I like it to work with it better. And then I will cut this on, on a 45. And one thing to note is, and I'll show you a bit on this one. So when I cut on a 45 on this one right here, I wanna cut past that line a little bit. So I, when I cut it, I wanna cut past a little bit. The reason why is when I come back the other way, let me cut this one first. When I come back this way, I'm matching that 45 up there with my, with my slant, with my cut. So it makes it easier. So when I go to pop that out, it comes right out and it's easy. And then I just have my dental tool. This helps me to remove it. And then with my dental tool, because it scrapes teeth and then take all your plaque off, it has kind of an edge to it. So I can come in here and kind of just smooth it out a little bit. And it makes it just a more crisp edge. So I'll show you on this one. So you get the idea? So I'm gonna do the rest of my corner post and some other extra other carving. And if you wanna kind of get more in the philosophy of it and I can uh, have a wood carving video, you can go check out. All right, so I've carved these four pieces up. Here be my corner post. And I've also ran the wire brush over them. And then on the ends, I've ran the wire brush uh, even more on an angle to exaggerate the end. And this is the top. Uh, the bottom, I uh, really don't care. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of be buried with in the planking. So all four of those are as close as I could get them with uh, the larger Curta cube being at the top and the two down at the bottom. And I'll be doing more carving as we go along. Like there's one, there's a piece I want to do for the fireplace, the the mantle. I want to carve that one as well. But all I need to get these done so we can start. Go ahead and start applying glue and planks to the flooring. So one thing to that I want to do, and I've learned through trial and error, and I don't like the error because it's a pain in the butt and it's hard to deal with. What I want to do is I want to I want to look for a brush. Is what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to paint the undercoat of this before I apply any planking. The reason why is because once you, if, if it's left white and you put your planking down, then it's hard to get the white seams that are in, possibly in between the, the planking and it becomes a nightmare. And I've done it, I did on the, I learned tragically through the roll houses years ago and I try to do this. It doesn't always, doesn't mean I always remember to do it, but I want to apply this down below. All right, they're close enough to being dry. I'm tired of waiting. Uh, I put them on a little bit thick, but I wanted it to cover well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put quarter inch lines on these 
And the reason why is I want guidelines. I won't necessarily follow them, but it helps me keep them straight as I'm going across so they don't start to go uh, cockeyed. So I'm just gonna put little tick marks down and then I'm gonna draw lines. All right, it's time, time for some for some glue. You can use hot glue if you want. I just choose to use this, just because it allows me to be, it's a little bit more forgiving if I screw up. All right, now that I have that all done, I want to make sure it dries flat. So I'm going to put some very useful weight on there. Make sure it's flat. And then I'll do the rest that way as well. But that way it dries flat and I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to try and make this look like a hewn log instead of uh, with all the wood grains in it. I'm going to make it look like it used to be part of a log cabin. So I'm just going to shave the sides a little bit, just because I want them rounded. I just don't want them, I don't want that crisp, sharp edge. I've never done this technique before, so I'm just gonna see if I can pull it off. I've never tried to make a, uh, a log that was made for a log cabin. So I know one of the things they do is they get an ax and they go through and they break the grain. And I sound like I know what I'm talking about, it's just I watch a lot of barnwood builders. And then, so I'm just gonna use this, my exacto knife to do that. Now I could go out and buy a, some wood carving tools, but I don't want it. But I might go and invest in some <laughs> after trying this. Okay, I think I figured it out. I think I can pull it off by doing this. So I'm gonna go one direction and not go all the way over and just kind of, I like the sharpness of the blade. I might look and see if I can get an exacto blade that's maybe fits this knee, but until then I'm just gonna use this. And not go all the way over, not just go all the way across and then flip it around and do it from this side. And just kind of do it in a very erratic pattern. I'm gonna see if I can give it the hewn log look. And also, when I dig into it, I wanna dig more with the point. I don't wanna do it with the flyer part of the blade. I wanna do it more with the point. So I'm kind of tearing the log, <laughs> the log, so I'm tearing the basswood. And so I don't have one complete stroke all the way across either. I'm kind of just doing that. Uh, I think I may be able to get away with just one of these. So my work's cut out for me. Yeah, so I'm just gonna uh, get going on it. All right, that was a lot of effort to get that hewn look. I'm I'm fairly pleased with it, but I'm definitely gonna research 
and see if I can find a smaller woodworking tool to make that a lot easier because that was kind of a pain in the butt. But right now I'm gonna work on and I'm gonna pin the walls on this so I can start gluing uh, slats into the walls. Notice that cracking or that on the back. So these bow a little bit. I've done it before. And all I do is just gently do that and it straightens them out. Now I'm not gluing it yet because I want the flexibility of having the walls uh, that I can take them off if I want. Uh, especially when it comes time to painting them. I really want that flexibility. I don't want to be down here painting my detail uh, because my walls are so high. I'm going to line the top first and get that lined up and then I'll worry about the bottom. I'll do that on both of these. Well, I just finished editing this segment or part one of the Tavern series. I thought I might be able to squeeze it into fewer parts, but I'm not going to be able to and have it still make sense. So I need to stretch it out a little bit more. Not that I really wanted to because I didn't want to have this go on for very long. You did see the finished product as far as before the painting is applied, but that's uh, just to have it make sense. and because of all the components, there's so many little things in this tutorial that I want it to make sense, I want it to be usable. Uh, or if you can take a part of it and use it, then I want that to be able to happen, so. Uh, oh, and also one thing I'd like to, uh, um, if you would comment below and uh, come up with a name for the tavern. Uh, if you do come up with a name and we choose it, then I'll make a little sign and hang it from one of the, the beams. I think that'd be pretty cool. So if you have a, if you have an idea just uh put a comment below and i i'm gonna i will have a follow-up tutorial after this whole, whole thing's done and uh, i will make a bar and probably some other various things in that tavern uh, i'm not sure yet i'm not sure if i'm gonna make tables or mugs or anything like that so i I'm, I'm not positive on what i'm gonna do about that yet uh, but i definitely will make a bar i haven't i already have the idea for it and i think i'm hoping i can pull it off I've already learned how to do some of the things I wanted to do on that bar, so that's good. Um, I'm also gonna have, I'm also asked the uh, Hobby Hooligans if they'll uh, paint me up some minis for the final shots when it's all painted, so we can have some painted minis in there, and I want them to paint minis that we, we're gonna eventually use in our role-playing games. So that'll be cool. Uh, I'm painting one up. I did have some time this last Friday to paint some up. Uh, we had a paint night, we had our annual paint night, so I started one. Um, I'm gonna paint a monk. Well, I'm painting a monk. Not gonna paint a monk. I am painting a monk. Uh, but before I close, I'd like to give the taco of the day out to my wife. Uh, it may sound kind of cheesy, but I don't care. 
she uh, has been very patient with me in my endeavor and giving me some feedback. Says I kind of ramble sometimes. <laughs> uh, repeat myself. It's kind of painful to edit yourself. That I got. I have to admit that. Uh, but uh, it's been really. She's been really patient. And the cool thing is, well, she's cool anyway. But the really cool thing is, last Saturday when I was doing some honeydews with her, I was. Uh, we placed all the doorknobs and uh, hinges in her house, and I was actually going about the, the hard way. <laughs> I was taking the doors off and everything. And we did about three doors and my son Luke comes up and goes, why don't you just take one, leave it on, leave it on there and take one hinge off at a time. And I just kind of stared at him for a little bit. And I was like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Yeah, so much easier. Did that. I'm so glad he mentioned that. <clears throat> Ended up buying him a couple 12 packs of Mountain Dew for it. Yeah, he deserved it. But uh, Shay gets to talk of the day uh, because uh, she is uh, said, we should turn one of our uh, spare bedrooms into a studio so I can put all this stuff in there and I can film in a different environment and a little bit more controlled environment and a uh, finished environment and then really focus on getting my art room to where I want it. So that'll be cool. Uh, then we can put up, put things in there. Probably happen in a few months, but I thought that was really cool and it wasn't my idea, it was hers. So she gets to taco of the day and I'll, I know what tacos she likes and so I'd definitely buy her some and that'll probably be the best taco she's ever had. Uh, anyway, like I said, if you like this uh, and you want to carry on the conversation, if you have any questions, comments, put them below. And uh, if you like what you, the product that we give you, uh, follow us, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, share it with other people. So hopefully you can uh, help other people in, um, in their hobby, in their RPG. And, uh, anyway. Imagine, execute, and persevere, and rem remember what my mother used to always say, um, anyone can do art. Ciao. Cool fire. So very nice. Did you say sa, dude? What? Did you say Southern sa? Southern Nights. Sa, dude.